Check out DraftKings shares on the move after CNBC's David Faber reported that the sports betting giant is offering upwards of $20 billion to buy British betting company Entain. The stock would reportedly be largely in DraftKings stock, but with cash mixed in. There's a twist, though, in this tale. Entain already has an online sports betting partnership with MGM in the U.S., and any potential deal would require MGM's approval. Let's dive deeper into this wild wager with Jeffrey's senior gaming analyst, David Katz. David, great to have you with us. Um, this seems it's like a, a, I don't know, a, a big mess that, that DraftKings is sort of introducing itself into, knowing that it would have to get MGM's approval for this deal to go through. Uh, no question. I, as you can see, I came to the office this morning to work on some projects, not exactly client or TV ready, uh, and one thing led to another, and, and, and here we are. Uh, what we've known is that, you know, MGM has had this partnership with Entain. Uh, called BetMGM, it has started to accelerate very nicely. They did 23% uh, iGaming market share. Uh, they're poised to be number two in sports betting in the United States. Uh, and there had been an offer back in January by MGM to buy out NJ. Uh Due to UK laws, they had to wait six months, which would have brought us to June. And there is an expectation that we've written about that MGM would take another shot uh, at it. Uh, they have cash on their balance sheet. They ended the quarter with $5.6 billion, another $6 billion on the come. So they have had the resources. And this DraftKings bid, as you pointed out, Melissa, came completely out of the blue this morning. And they're not talking to us. And so it's not entirely clear uh, exactly what their strategy is for it. How do you play out the chessboard, David, if you think that MGM is not going to um, let, let this go, uh, let this happen, and we'll make a higher bid and likely get Entain in the end. Look, there, there's certainly a possibility that they could come over the top. Uh, and, you know, we will find out uh, in the near term. We did speak with MGM today, and they're, they're not saying a ton, uh, other than, you know, they will, you know, sit down with the parties involved and, and see what makes the most sense for MGM shareholders. Uh, and we have trust that they will get uh, to that answer. You know, scenario one is that, uh, you know, MGM has the, uh, the right, as you pointed out in your opening, uh, to buy out the other half of Bet MGM, that JV. The question around that, Melissa, is uh, what technology and what IP comes along with that other half of, uh, of, of the JV? Or does the important technology and people go uh, with, you know, the Entain parent company? We don't know that. And as I said, you know, MGM could come back and go over the top and try and take down all of Entain, uh, but it involves a very large, global, complex business uh, that is in, you know, some markets that aren't fully legalized yet. Uh, it changes the complexion of, you know, what we find compelling about Bet MGM, which has really had a ton of momentum. So, David, how do you play then the chessboard as it relates to the other competitive landscape and consolidation? And if you and if you think about the camps that have been moving aggressively, so it's been uh, the casinos and it's been the call it the independence and, and the dedicated and pure play uh, digital online sports betting plays. Uh, but who, who are the next folks that have to come together? Because scenario analysis one way or the other says either DraftKings prevails here um, or MGM has to prevail and that either way you've you've taken one piece off the board and the big need to get even bigger. Right. So look the, the, the way we step back and look at this and, and this is the way we've looked at sports betting globally at Jeffries over the past couple of years. Right. You need market access. Uh, you need access to customers or eyeballs. You need technology and you need content. And that's the framework that we've looked at everyone. Uh, and, and so, you know, in DraftKings' case, I mean, they clearly have a brand and access to customers. Market access, they've had to buy. They merged with SB Tech through their SPAC transaction and have been rolling that out, you know, over the recent past. And certainly the questions come up all day today as to whether that is working for them or they felt like they needed to go in another direction. Uh, you know, in the case of MGM, just to take it one step further, let's say they buy out the other half of BetMGM from Entain. Will they be undercapitalized on the technology side? And to answer your question, does that bring them to some of the smaller public players that are B2B tech providers, that are B2B content providers? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the GAN, uh, RSI, you know, many of those are on our coverage list and without putting any likelihoods around them. 
you know, when you look at that framework, you will start to see uh, that they have some and not other aspects of, uh, you know, of that, for, that, that, you know, fully capitalized value chain that we lay out. I'm glad that you mentioned that, David, because just earlier we were talking about Disney and some comments that CEO Bob Chapek made earlier um, mm -hmm. at this Goldman Sachs conference about being interested in sports betting. We saw the way Disney got into the streaming game by buying a, a relatively small streaming company and basically buying the technology. And you just mentioned a whole list in your coverage universe of of the technology companies. Uh, do you see any sort of logical fits there, possibilities? You know, look, I, I, I prefer to stay away from making specific matches. Right. But what we have seen are companies that have shown specific strength uh, in delivering content. We have seen companies and you can look at our you know, published reports, um, you know, uh, on, on companies that bring specific technology that are more eye gaming heavy versus mm -hmm. sports betting. And the one point I do want to make you know, clear is that I think the public focus on sports betting uh, is one thing. When you look at the industry and you talk to people, the real value and the profits are in the eye gaming, the real yeah. money over wagering. And, and that's where everyone's trying to get to and make sure that they're well positioned.